So, Madman's a name you would have heard a bunch on this channel, and in the last seven months, Madman have been releasing cinema screenings of several anime movies, and a lot of these anime movies are actually very recent to when the releases come out in Japan. Today, I want to talk about the last five anime screenings that they've done, and just give a small little review or more so impressions of each of the films and yeah, just what I thought about them. So starting in the month of October, I found out that the new One Piece film, Film Gold, was being released in uh, select cinemas across Australia. So Thursday the 27th of October 2016, which was the first day that it came out in Australia, I went down and I saw One Piece Film Gold. Uh, on the first day, or on the first few days, they were releasing the limited edition poker chips with the uh, with ticket holders, so I went down with my sister and we got, we actually got two each, which was, which was really, really good. Um, Chris, don't photo bomb me! I gotta get those chips anyway. So yeah, we actually got two of these chips each, these limited edition poker chips, uh, because when we first went, we were some of the first people there, because I just thought it was really cool how they were giving out uh, limited edition items. Turns out it wasn't the first time they'd be doing this, more on that later, but yeah, the guy was like, uh, he said that they hadn't been supplied or something, so I was really disappointed, because I thought we weren't going to get them anyway. He later found a box, because um, it was the very first day, and I was like, you know, why would they not have them on the first day? He later found a box and he gave us two each, so the two I got, I want to show you here. Just trying to get this to focus right now. These are the two ones I got. God, come on, focus. So they have little clips that I guess you can click it onto your phone or whatever. It's probably more of a Japanese thing. Uh, so yeah, those, those are the two I got. I believe that there was a set of seven, six or seven to collect. And because we got four, I was really hoping that we'd get, uh, you know, one, in, uh, one of each character. But unfortunately, the other two my sister got were these Sanji ones as well. They're not going to focus, but you've seen that one anyway. So, yeah, awesome to get those, um, and like I said, I was there the first day to make sure I got them, so I have four of them, uh, very, very cool, but yeah, now let's talk about what I thought of the film. So just to give a little history uh, about myself and One Piece, I watched One Piece back in, oh my goodness, it must have been like 2000, 2001, One Piece started airing in 1999, of course it's been going for like, you know, uh, nearly 20 years now, it's one of the longest running... Uh, anime series in history, but yeah, I had seen um, hand, a handful of episodes of the first season of One Piece back around 2000, 2001, and so really only knew like the original, the original cast, the original um, pirates that they gathered onto their crew in in the first season. So I really only knew a small handful of the characters. Of course, since then, years have gone by, and hundreds of episodes uh, later, more more crew members have been recruited, more characters have been introduced, side characters, enemies, all this stuff. So I really went into it with no knowledge up to the current uh, One Piece lore and the current One Piece characters, but it was very easily accessible, even for someone new like my sister who'd never seen an episode of One Piece in her life, to really go in and just enjoy it. Uh, the basic plot of the series was, you know, the, the Straw Hat crew goes into this massive uh, casino sort of ship, like a giant... Uh, ship made of there's a heap of gold everywhere and there's casinos and there's a heap of gambling and think of something like Las Vegas but out on sea out on this giant cruiser and yeah basically the pirate crew meet um, a bunch of people there and they start gambling in the casino they start winning a lot of money and as you can imagine conflict uh, ensues with the casino and there's a lot of characters stabbing each other in the back and all for the sake of money so Eventually, as you'd really expect, it just turns into an, an all-out brawl, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, it was very, very entertaining. I mean, there was, by the end of it, there was some crazy power-ups that I'd never seen before. Some 
crazy ac- action sequences. Pretty much the movie, I think, went for about two hours, maybe two hours and a half. And seriously, the, like, the last half an hour was just this massive all-out battle. People are getting friggin' bloodied up and beaten to a pulp and people are powering up and just going crazy and they're trying to, like, top each other, one-up each other with these power-ups and it was just a ton of fun and basically what I expected, the cast is pretty lovable, uh, you know, it was just like when I watched it back in the day, Luffy was pretty lovable, Zoro was pretty badass, they had Nami for your fan service and all that sort of stuff, so really, I pretty much knew what to expect with this one, but... I've definitely seen worse uh, shown in movies. It was, it was pretty stereotypical from the start to the finish, but very worth watching for fans of the of the franchise, fans of One Piece, and yeah, all up just a very entertaining ride. So this was the first time as an adult I had seen an anime film in cinemas, and I just want to briefly say that the experience really blew me away. To have the surround sound and to have the anime up on the big screen and really just just so, so, so crystal clear, so big. Everything was bigger, everything was better, everything was louder. Like, you really felt the impact of every punch, every explosion, everything like that. And, yeah, I'd never I'd never really experienced that. And I, I have to say, from the very first time I saw uh, One Piece Gold, I was addicted to the cinema experience. And so, from then, I didn't know that Mad Men were going to be uh, continuing this continuing to bring out a film every single month or nearly every single month but I just said to myself every single anime film that comes out I'm gonna go and see in cinemas and so then November rolled around and your name was announced in cinemas so uh, November 25th on a Friday 2016 I again went with my sister and we went to see your name in cinemas your name or Kimi no Noa has been pretty critically claimed um, around the anime community. It has been regarded as one of the best films to come out of the last, you know, decade of the <laughs> of the last hundred years or anything like that. People have gone absolutely nuts about this film, and for good reason. Directed by renowned anime producer and director Makoto Shinkai, uh, your name really delivered. Visually, it was absolutely stunning. It was one of the most impressive uh, displays of animation that I'd ever seen across any medium, whether it be you know, Japanese anime or even Western animation. Visually, it was just stunning. There were so many sequences that you could, you can just tell were beautifully hand-drawn and beautifully crafted, uh, like the sequences with stars and, and comets and, uh, you know, comets falling and uh, all these different colors in the sky. Really absolutely beautiful uh, imagery in that, in that scene. Story-wise, the movie was an absolute roller coaster of just unexpected uh, events you know, unexpected twists, and really, it, it did it did everything well. It, it pulled it, it pulled at my heartstrings uh, quite a few times, basically. If you don't know what this name is about, go on... <laughs> this name, what the fuck am I talking about? It's about a young girl who lives in the countryside, and really, she's just... She wants to be in the city and stuff like that, and she's really just fed up with uh, her small rural town and, you know, seeing the same faces every day. She wants bigger and better things. And the same thing for this uh, young man who lives in the city. Really, he just wants to get away. He feels like he's bogged down in his life and in his, uh, you know, he can't seem to get the girl he likes in his relationship and everything like that. Nothing seems to be going right with him. And basically, through through dreams, through, uh, you know, a sequence of dreams and a sequence of over an amount of time, these two, the boy and the girl, they swap bodies. And so when they fall asleep, they jump into the body of the, of their, of the other person. So... Basically, they learn to experience an all new world and really see the world, through, see a different world through the eyes of a different person. So obviously, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a gender bender, like they're swapping genders and there's some comedy with that and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty lighthearted and they, they start to realize that, you know, when they're in the other person's body, the other person's in their body. So they start communicating through things like... Uh, diaries or writing notes in each other's phone and stuff like that and yeah they just it's a really unique thing that they get to know each other without ever knowing the other person in real life and uh what actually starts to happen is these people want to get to know each other but they they start to forget uh one day the dream sequences stop happening and they start to forget each other and they start to forget the names and the events of the other person and so basically it unfolds from there, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of drama and stuff like that. There's romance aspects, and 
Yeah, it is a fantastic film. Now, I want to I want to say something that probably not a lot of people are going to agree with. In my opinion, this movie was very very good. It was it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Period. But uh, the community for this movie have hyped it up to be, in my opinion, something that I think it's overhyped. I think that it's not the absolute definitive best anime movie out there, the masterpiece to be all, you know, uh, new animations and new movies coming out nowadays. I really think that it was a very good movie and it's it stands up there as one of the best, but I wouldn't honestly call it the best. I wouldn't honestly call it the best film I'd seen. Um, and I'm not bashing on the film. I love the film. But the things I the things I read about it are almost building it up to a certain level of quality that I don't think it can really live up to. I think that if someone was to see the film, it has this overarching shadow of popularity that it has to sort of overcome in a sense. And I don't think that that's the correct way for someone to get everything out of this film in terms of just enjoyment and stuff like that. I think really it's a... It's a very good film, but it's not groundbreaking. It doesn't shatter every other, um, every other, you know, stellar film out there. It's really, it's fantastic, but I do believe it's slightly overhyped in the community. So then December rolled around and I don't, no anime films came out. Uh, around that time, the Death Note live action film came out. It might've been December or January, I can't remember, but that came out in there. So yeah, December and January, nothing really came out. It wasn't until February that Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions, a new Yu-Gi-Oh! film uh, celebrating the 20th, or was it 25th, uh, anniversary of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. So this was a brand new story from the original manga creator, Takahashi Kazuki. And yeah, like in terms of the actual original Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime starring, you know, Yugi, uh, Jonichi, and, you know, Kaiba, and all, all of those original characters, they hadn't really been anything out for, like, yeah, over 20 years. And so, for so many um, old-school anime fans like myself, really, Yu-Gi-Oh! was one of the things I grew up watching, and I have, I have very good memories of Yu-Gi-Oh! And leading up to this film, I had never watched Yu-Gi-Oh! in its entirety, so I decided to kind of quickly marathon the whole of the first uh the first series of Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, the Yu-Gi-Oh classic, the first season, and kind of uh just just retouch on all the characters and all the events and stuff like that. And I have to say, like the leading up to it, I thoroughly enjoyed the first, you know, season, the first two seasons, the first three seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! It was so nostalgic to me. Um the fourth and the fifth season I felt less nostalgic on because to be honest I'd never seen that as a kid. And I think nostalgia was one of the, th the biggest things that was really pushing uh, this new Yu-Gi-Oh movie forward because it it's um, out of all this out of all the uh, the movies that I saw really the cinema was absolutely packed for this one like it was sold out and stuff like that. A lot of old school anime fans came to see Yu-Gi-Oh back in its full action, full glory, and um, I have to say that in terms of in terms of seeing all the characters again, it was very nostalgic, but it was kind of a letdown. It really didn't. It really didn't uh, capture the essence of what made the original series good, in my opinion. I think that the villain in the series was extremely shallow. I think that the CG of the monster looks awful. It looks god awful. Like that's one of the things I loved about the original Yu-Gi-Oh series is all the monsters were uh, they were cell animation. They were hand drawn. In the later Yu-Gi-Oh series, like GX, 5Ds, CG started getting implemented, and I really think it lost that that uh, charm that made it really something so unique about a card game where holographic monsters came to life and started battling each other. The CG just took me completely out of it. It, uh, took, a, it took away the immersion for me. Um, with that said, I, you know, I did, I did still enjoy the experience. And one thing to mention, it was aired in the dub. So all the original voice actors came back, you know, uh, what's that guy, Green or whatever, who voiced Yugi? came back, um, Kaiba's voice actor, Joey's voice actor, they all came back for this, so, or at least most of them came back, so that was really, really good, and, yeah, I think just the nostalgia train, this nostalgia effect was one of the best things about those, that movie, so I saw it, first day it came out, Thursday the 2nd of February, 2017, and the reason I was there on the very first date was because they were giving away promo cards, and... This is, I got two as well because I saw it whoop, with my girlfriend and she decided to give me hers. So there's two promo cards. These are Obelisk the Tormentor and Alternate um, 
cover, an alternate artwork of Obelisk the Tormentor. And yeah, so you pick these up with early ticket holders and I have two there. Probably I'm going to open one and keep one uh, in its original packaging, but that'll be for another time. I don't really have anywhere to keep it, so I don't want to open it right now. But yeah, as I say, I just think it's really, really cool that, you know, Mad Men have put in the extra incentive to kind of go and see these films. They really, I can tell they're really trying to get something started and really bring um, new anime series, new anime movies to, to viewers because like ever since February, they've released a new anime movie every month. So I'm just hoping that this is going to succeed and I'm going to uh, support every screening I can um, in the impending future. So yeah, that was Yu-Gi-Oh! Come Wednesday, the 15th of March, 2017, my girlfriend and I had been marathoning the first two seasons of pretty much everything of Sword Art Online leading up to the, the new movie coming out and that's Ordinal Scale. So, um, I had previously seen the first season of Sword Art Online, I watched it way back, like when I was getting into anime pretty much, I actually saw it air on television uh, in the dub, so it was my first time watching it in the sub in Japanese, uh, because that's what the movie was coming out in, and yeah, like rewatching the first series, I'm a big Sword Art Online fan, and I freaking love the first series. My opinion, one of the most entertaining seasons of anime out there. And yeah, I really enjoyed the first season, rewatching it again. The second season for me was pretty up and down. It was, it started off like an interesting concept, and the first couple of episodes were really gripping and really entertaining. And then it kind of just played out into this mess of uh, trying to appeal to weird sort of like. The whole thing of Kirito kind of acting like a girl and being girly and being trying to be cutesy, it was really just bizarre and it honestly put me off uh, a treat. Like I wasn't enjoying that aspect of it at all. And then kind of once Gun Gale ended, it kind of went back into the whole Alfheim online setting and you know, the fairies and battling and RPG elements and Klein came back into it and all the side characters came back into it. And that was when it really started to pick up again for me, surprisingly. The last, I guess you'd call it like an arc, the last five or six episodes of Sword Art Online Season 2 had one of the most emotionally moving storylines that I've ever seen in anime prior to this. Uh, the whole story with Yuki and, you know, her... I'm not, I'm not going to lay any spoilers down, but Yuki's character and the actual uh, reality of the situation, it was really betrayed in such a... such an, I don't know, just affecting way. Um, I think a lot of people live out certain fantasies and, and when people go online and play RPGs and stuff like that, they really do take on character settings. <laughs> Sorry, they do take on um, character traits that aren't typically, they're not typically accurate to how they actually are in real life. And yeah, Yuki's story just as her being one of the best swordsmen and in Elfheim Online, but in reality, what she was in real life, it was just, it was really, really affecting and really surprising, I'd say. And uh, my girlfriend actually predicted it before it happened, and I didn't see it coming. And yeah, it brought it brought a tear to my eye. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was pretty moved by that story. So that's how it was leading up to Ordinal Scale. So first season of Sword Art Online, very good, very entertaining. Second season of Sword Art Online, first half, um, pretty up and down. I would say I wouldn't call it bad, but I wouldn't really call it great. Um, second half kind of redeemed it in some sense, but it was pretty much on rocky ground at this point. One thing Sword Art Online seems to be very, very efficient at is accurately portraying the times, uh, the technological, technological advances and the trends in technology at the time. So basically at the time of Sword Art Online coming out, the first season, um, you know, virtual reality was just starting to kick off. The development of, uh you know, VR, the Oculus Rift and stuff like that, that was just starting to kick off. And really it was, it was, a, it was pretty popular and it was gaining popularity and it was gaining kind of its footing, I think. And that just came out at a perfect time to really cement it as one of the most popular anime series to this date. The second season of Sword Art Online captured uh, the first person shooter craze and everyone just kind of like Call of Duty this and Call of Duty that. And like, really that was one of the most popular uh, genres of gaming at the time. And basically, yeah, Sword Art Online just again went with the trends. Coming into 2016, Pokemon Go was massive. The Pokemon Go craze was like insane. Everyone was playing Pokemon Go. People that didn't even like Pokemon, people that didn't even like gaming, Pokemon Go just really took over the masses and it was the new kind of leap in uh, in gaming and virtual 
technology and virtual reality and stuff like that. So what Sword Art Online did, they brought out Ordinal Scale. Ordinal Scale is basically the same sort of technology as Pokemon Go, but more in a virtual sense. So you think after all the things that happened to Kirito and Asuna and the gang, they would not be very keen to jump into virtual reality again, but lo and behold, they decided to jump into it. So Ordinal Scale is the new gaming technology out. It's basically a headset that lets you see virtual reality uh, battles and also take place in them not just in the comfort of your own uh, bedroom, but actually going out into the cities, moving in real time to these battles in open locations and stuff like that. And just like in a similar aspect to Pokemon Go, like moving around physically, chasing battles, fighting enemies and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, all through virtual reality. Eventually a new evil is taking over through this ordinal scale. It's Kirito's job. Once again, play the hero and save Asuna, the damsel in distress. This time he's not relying solely on his gameplay skills, he actually has to use his physical skills and his physical prowess uh, to actually overcome overcome the odds. Kirito um, physically like getting fitter and physically improving in his sword play and stuff, like in real time, in real life, it was something that was really interesting to me. Um, gamers aren't typically the fittest people, but Kirito was forced to literally level up himself as a, as a person and as a physical, you know, a machine to kind of a vessel to do what he needed to do. So all these battles um, Kirito is taking on in real life, the danger is this time instead of dying in real life if you die in the game, if you get killed in the game you basically lose the memory of the time you spent in Sword Art Online. So um, whoever made this uh, ordinal scale machine is trying to basically take all the memories of all the players of Sword Art Online and put them into a database to well, I'm not going to spoil everything of the film, but let's just say that I think it was a very unique story and I think it was a very interesting uh, plot. One thing I have to say about Ordinal Scale is it had some of the best action sequences I've seen in any anime period. The action sequences in Ordinal Scale were freaking phenomenal. They were so entertaining. You, you seriously, I don't know if it was just the cinema experience, but I felt every single impact from the moment Klein was jumped and beat up by the antagonist uh, his arm getting broken and twisted, you know, Kirito fighting for his memories and fighting to save uh, the girl he loved. Every movement, every impact, it was just so, so, yeah. Every movement, every punch, it was just so impacting. I, I, ah, man, I hadn't seen anything like that. Pretty high budget, pretty quality animation. By the end of it, one of the, one of the best things I liked is that the final battle, every single character from the franchise, protagonist, antagonist, anti-hero came into that battle and lend, lend their strength to Kirito and the gang and it was just phenomenal. Even Yuki, as I said from uh, season two, the last arc, she came into it as well. And it was just a fantastic climax to a really good film. I'd say Sword Online is actually really one of the best things in the franchise. I think it's up there with the first season, definitely. Ordinal Scale is well worth checking out. If you're into the, if you, look, if you love Sword Online or you hate Sword Online, I think Ordinal Scale, give it a chance. It's only like a two hour film. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And finally, in April, Saturday the 8th, uh, 2017, uh, me and my girlfriend went to see A Silent Voice. A Silent Voice, Koe no Okatachi, is a coming of age series a romance series, a drama series, a tragedy series, so many different aspects, a comedy series. It's not even a series, but um, so many different aspects to this. The basic plot is um, in elementary school, a young man bullies a deaf girl when she comes to the school. She's treated like an outcast. She's Because she's deaf, because of her disability, um, she's picked on, she's bullied. Her stuff gets stolen. Her... Uh, hearing aids get thrown away, all sorts of horrible things happen to this girl and uh, yeah, basically because of the trauma, because of the bullying, she has to move schools. She has to leave the school and what what ends up happening is even though pretty much everyone in the class was part of this, part of this, uh, you know, series of abuse and stuff like that, the main culprit, the main bully, Ishida, is he's blamed for everything basically and everything that he did to her basically starts happening to him. So everyone turns on him, everyone, you know, he's outcast from all the groups, none of his friends will hang out from in it, with him anymore. His stuff gets stolen, his stuff gets vandalized, he gets bullied, um, 
physically and, and verbally and mentally, he's just, he's all fucked up. So what happens to this guy is he basically starts to regret and realize what he did to this girl and everything he did, he starts to regret. And as he goes on in life, uh, I think he's around 17. He, he thinks about all sorts of things. He thinks about suicide and he thinks about making it up to this girl, basically. Um, Ishida's mother basically has to pay, uh, you know, money to, <laughs> to replace some of the hearing aids, some of the property that Ishida damaged Nishimiya Shoko, uh, her family. And basically Ishida just tries to, he gets a part-time job. He tries to repay his mother the money um, that he lost for her. He tries to make up for everything that he's done, every crime that he's committed against this girl. And basically he comes, he finds this girl, he tracks her down and he comes and tries to make amends for that. So, uh, this is the story of redemption, I guess. This is something I can resonate with and something I can relate to. Um, kids are pretty naive to the world and often they're self-centered. They don't really know what's happening and they don't know the repercussions of their actions. And I think this is such a relatable story from both sides of the perspective, from people doing the bullying and people being bullied. Uh, you know, certain characters in the, in the series, as they get older, they do complete changes. And I think that's pretty accurate to life. You know, no one really stays the same. Some people stay the same their whole life. Some people who are really bad characters and have really bad morals, they grow up to have really bad morals and they grow up to be really bad people. So watching the trailer for this series, I highly recommend you go and check out the trailer. I knew this series was going to be good. What I didn't realize is I didn't realize this series was going to become... I keep saying series. Why do I keep doing that? I didn't realize this movie was going to become my favorite movie of all time. That is not just in anime. That is not just in Japanese uh, storytelling. This movie became my favorite movie ever made, ever I'd ever seen. At any time in my life, I can't think of a movie that actually resonated with me as much or actually just entertained me as much, emotionally gripped me as much. This movie just seemed to throw, throw me around emotionally. Like sometimes I was laughing out loud at this movie. Sometimes I was genuinely upset at the events that were transpiring. Uh, sometimes I was feeling sorry for some characters. Sometimes I was just feeling like I was feeling like I was in this movie. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but basically in this movie, so many of the characters were lovable, but so many of them weren't. So many of them were just, I've never seen an anime that's really, there's character stereotypes and things like that. But this anime really just to me, um, every character seemed real. Every character you could literally, I could put, Pull, bleh, pull out of the film and put onto someone's face in real life. Like so many characters just seem so real. Like I'd met people in, in real life that could have been in this film. Um, the art style that this used was very, very powerful yet very, very subtle. A lot of like soft color palettes and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of soft lines and stuff like that. It was just visually stunning. Some of the animation effects that they use like crosses over people's faces and uh you know the crosses falling off when when that character came into Ishida's life and crosses being put back on when they left his life it was just something very unique I don't want to spoil anything for this movie I I just think that when I was growing up I had a deaf friend as well and uh Hayami Saudi who played uh the deaf girl Nishimiya she did such an amazing job basically imitating a deaf a deaf person and imitating the way they try to enunciate and the way they try to get um, their communication across. It was, it was just really emotionally affecting. And I really was sucked in. I really believed um, that this girl really had a disability because uh, it's something that bullying is a touchy subject and you know, everyone in life goes through it. But the way this film portrayed it, I think it's just so interesting and so relatable. I really would highly recommend any of you guys watching to check this movie out if you haven't already. In my opinion, the praise and the critical acclaim that your name got, this film should have got that because I honestly think that it's it's one of the biggest masterpieces ever made um, because of the because of the subject material it tackled and because of how perfectly it just nailed every single aspect of it. It's not. It's not a blockbuster film. It's not something that like the masses are going to go and see. It's something that you really, you have to get taken into the world, I think, to really appreciate a story like this, because basically it's a story that could happen in real life. It's not something that's, you know, fantastic or fantastical. It's not something that's virtually impossible. It's something that's very realistic. It's something that I think 
young adults and teenagers especially can really relate to it and yeah just really learn a lesson i think from from things the events that happen in this film honestly there's certain events that have happened in my life that are very accurate to this film and yeah it's just crazy i can't believe how much i loved this film um i was just i was breathtaking i was i was seriously taken back taken back so so far just it was stunning it was really everything about this film by no means was it absolute an absolute perfection of entertainment it was just a perfection in the sense that it was so realistic i've never been so immersed in a world as much as i've been immersed in this world but the thing is that this world could have been our world there's no real line between that fiction and uh you know reality if you've seen this film no spoilers but the final the final moments of the film just just before the main climax i was honestly i think i stopped i think i forgot to breathe i <laughs> i was like looking at the film with my hand over my mouth i just i couldn't i couldn't actually believe what was happening i was so emotionally just it had me it, it just completely had me i was fully into it um what i hoped wasn't going to happen didn't happen and i don't know i may have been an emotional mess if it had have happened um let's just say that it's very hard for me for anime or really any storytelling medium to actually invoke real emotion and real sadness and real uh anxiety within me but this film this film took everything out of me and I just felt so emotionally cleansed after watching this film. If you haven't seen A Silent Voice, if you haven't seen Koi no Katachi, please, I implore you to go and see this film. It is my favorite film of all time and I highly recommend it to anyone. Films, fans of anime, fans of Western storytelling, I think anyone can get something out of this film. It was amazing. It was an absolute masterpiece. It was the best film I've ever seen and it's the best thing. I think it's honestly like, in terms of films, the short nature of a film, really, I can't get invested in characters as much as I can in series, just because of the screen time. I haven't spent as long with these people. It's like if you had a friend in real life for five years, and then you meet someone and you've known them for two weeks. It's it's kind of like that sort of thing. You can't feel as emotionally invested in such a small amount of time, but somehow this film just took everything. It took everything out of me. It took, I was fully emotionally captivated. So please, guys, if you haven't seen this film, definitely definitely see it and so yeah guys the next film i saw was in the month of may it was fairy tale dragon cry i'm going to do a full review of this film so that's going to be the next video coming out on this channel so definitely stay tuned for that one but yeah those are the five the five films i've seen in cinema as of october 2016. the next film that's coming out in june in this month is black butler book of the atlantic so yeah, Mad Men have been releasing an anime film every single month, and I hope that this keeps going. If you're in Australia, guys, please support the anime Mad Men screenings. And yeah, if, you, if you've seen any of the films I reviewed or I gave my impressions on in this video, leave a comment down below. Let me tell you, let me... Let me know what you thought of these films. Let me know if you agree with me. Let, you know, let me know if you disagree with me. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe for more anime content coming soon, and I'll see you guys in the next review, Fairy Tale Dragon Cry. Until then, guys.